Operation Pedro Pan took place in the context of Cuba's revolution and conflict between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. In March 1952, when it became clear that Batista would lose the 1952 presidential election, he seized power and canceled the election along with general constitutional rights. The U.S. endorsed Batista soon after, but many Cubans wanted democracy and opposed Batista's coup. One opponent was Fidel Castro. Castro began organizing to overthrow Batista, promising an end to mafia ties, to restore the 1940 Constitution, and to reform agriculture, since 70% of Cuba's farmland was in foreign hands. Castro's movement lost early battles. CIA chief Dulles judged the early movement as non-communist, and the U.S. handicapped Batista's defense with an arms embargo. After this setback and major defeats in late 1958, Batista fled Cuba at 3 a.m. on January 1, 1959, and Castro took power in Havana on January the 8th. By April 1959, Soviet ties, repression and purges of the inner circle, nationalizations, and Castro's own statements showed that Cuba had exchanged a harsh dictatorship of the right for a harsh new dictatorship with attributes of Stalinism. In months, the U.S. turned from cautious support to covert opposition. President Eisenhower received and approved proposals for economic sanctions, covert operations, and disinformation radio. It was alleged and feared that the new government would end parental rights. It is a fact that Castro's literacy program contained propaganda, and some boys were sent to school in Soviet satellite countries. Operation Pedro Pan began in this context on December 24, 1960, with an urgent call from the State Department to Father Brian Walsh at the Catholic Welfare Bureau, seeking help sheltering 200 children coming from James Baker's Ruston Academy in Havana. Contemporary accounts say that some teens in Baker School were in an anti-Castro Catholic labor group working in the underground and were in danger of arrest. Their evacuation, along with so many other children, protected them and their parents from government reprisals. The airlift came to an end with the Cuban Missile Crisis on October 23, 1962. By then, 14,048 children had been airlifted. Children were sheltered at sites around the U.S. into 1966. Inside Cuba, the effort was called Rescate de la Niñez. The name Operation Pedro Pan was originated later by reporter Gene Miller. He wrote, This is the underground railway in the sky. Maybe it should be called Operation Pedro Pan. These are images of Camp Matacumbe, one of the Pedro Pan sites in Miami-Dade County. Camp Matacumbe is 11400 Southwest 137th Avenue on a plot of mostly forested land north of Miami Executive Airport or Tamiami Airport in West Kendall. This camp was in a remote and isolated location in 1960s Miami. Today, the county park and its fields are popular with families for outdoor sports. In this wide shot, we're seeing into the camp from an access road. In front of us, looking north, is the largest surviving building in Camp Matacumbe. The multi-purpose building housed four classrooms, dormitories, and a large recreation hall. Here's a group of boys in front of the building and the mobile home. This photo is titled January 13 and 14, 1963. This is a view of the building's interior through the windows. Panning to the east, this field is probably where the barracks, tent housing, and swimming pool were located. This building is the chapel. Here is the chapel in a 1961 photo, and today in 2022. Turning south, this building may have been an office or a caretaker residence. Facing south now, this was the dining room. Camp Matacumbe was closed in October 1964 when the boys were transferred to a consolidated site in former Marine Corps barracks, Building 67, at Camp Opalaka at the northeast corner of the airport grounds. The barracks were remodeled numerous times for military and immigration use, 
and were demolished in poor condition in the 1960s. In November 2003, Camp Matacumbe was purchased from the Archdiocese of Miami by Dade County Parks and Recreation and turned into a public park. The Kendall Camp location is now part of a Metro Dade County Park, Kendall Indian Hammocks Park. The park has soccer fields, courts for racket sports, hiking trails, and shelters for family cookouts. Like the other campuses for unaccompanied Cuban children, Camp Kendall was run by the Catholic Welfare Bureau of Miami under the direction of Father Brian O. Walsh. It was located in the former Dade County Home and Hospital and served from January 1961 to January 1963 in Operation Pedro Pan. The old classrooms still stand along with tennis and basketball courts on the old site. The girls' dorm is now used by a private firm providing social work services. The boys' dorm was torn down some time ago. Since 1964, the medical examiner used the boys' dorm site as Miami-Dade's county cemetery. Camp Kendall had 60 beds in two dormitories, four classrooms, and a small administration building. The girls and younger boys were moved to Florida City in early November 1961. Some of the boys stayed in Kendall until March of 1963. The boys moved to a former Marine Corps barracks at Opelika Airport. Kendall Camp is now at the south end of Kendall Indian Hammocks Park. The park opened to the public in July of 1988. The Florida City Camp was the largest of Operation Pedro Pan's locations. Like the other sites, it was created and operated by the Catholic Welfare Bureau. It served between 1961 and 1965 to relocate unaccompanied children to foster care facilities across the U.S. The camp was located 35 miles south of Miami in Florida City. By November 1961, more housing was required for the increasing numbers of unaccompanied children arriving after the failure of the 1961 Bahia de Cochinos invasion and Castro's simultaneous declaration of Cuba as a communist state. Northwest 2nd Avenue between Northwest 14th and Northwest 16th Streets in Florida City was the main artery running through the heart of the campus. At the south end of Northwest 2nd Avenue stands an apartment building over two blocks long, which the children used to call El Barco, or the ship, because it looked like a cruise ship when it was lit at night. The property was dotted with basketball and shuffleboard courts and benches along the Central Avenue. Florida City Camp closed in June 1966. By then, most of its remaining residents had been reunited with their parents. From 1962 to 1963, the Catholic Welfare Bureau also operated a camp for boys in St. John, Florida, a few miles south of Jacksonville. Here are more of the camps around the United States.